Hey, it's me. I'm on the edge of my seat here, back again with another brand new video. So today, I will be no damaging Yakuza 4. And I learned a little something. Akiyama is very fun to play as. As in, it's very fun to break the game with him. And Yakuza 4's boss fights give me plenty of opportunities to do that. There's only really like uh, two fights which are a little bit difficult, but here, as you can see with... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Ar 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 Araha? Uh, I, uh, I don't know, man. But pretty much Akiyama, like something which I really like about Yakuza 3 and 4 is that you can just endlessly bound enemies to a point. In Yakuza 3, you could bound them against walls, but with Akiyama, if you can get an enemy into a corner that doesn't really have any defined walls, you know, like a place where you like if you kick them, they don't like bound off of anything, you could just juggle them endlessly. You pretty much do like, uh, pretty much, I don't know, I do it in this little part here too, I decided to include this little group encounter just because Akiyama doesn't have that many boss fights. And that's just kind of a sad truth about Yakuza 4. Um, replaying it, I've kind of come to decide that uh, there's a few changes I would make to my All Yakuza Games Ranked uh, video. Uh, some of those placements I don't think apply anymore. And yeah, there's a few things I regret about that video, but I don't know, the main thing is, I don't think Yakuza 4 is as good as uh, Yakuza 2 or Kenzin. I'd have to put it uh, below those two. And yeah, it's just, well, the boss fights. Let me uh, get into it. So, I don't know. Yakuza 4's, like, boss fight selection would be, like, around the same as something like, I don't know, 3 or maybe some of the previous games. Just that the difference is that the boss fights are split across four characters so instead of feeling like the game has a good selection of boss fights it feels a lot more like each character kind of gets gimped and this is especially true for Akiyama because he's just really fun to play as is that I'll get into it once we get to uh, Mina, Minami Oh yeah, by the way, there was a guy behind me. I really had to shoot him down because uh, other than that, he would have got me. Uh, the great thing about Yakuza 4 is just that its core combat system is fantastic. It's honestly like one of my favorites in the series. I just wish the game had like more challenges that forced me to like engage with it because like like, I don't know, I guess when I was mentioning bounding, like, all the characters have, like, fantastic, like, bounding options. Well, I mean, Akiyama's the best in that, but, like, Saiji and Tanimura also have some pretty dope bounding options. And, well, Kiryu has, has his tool set from 3, but even better. Like, I don't know, if Kiryu from, like, this game was in Yakuza 3, Yakuza 3 might, like, become one of my favorites easily, because Yakuza, Kiryu in this game is just so much fun. I'll get to him when we get to him. But anyways, this boss fight is garbage. I hate this guy so much. And the, and the big thing that makes him, like, such a trash fight is just the actual very beginning. You know that little intro where it's just like, oh, here's the boss title and all that? Literally a frame once we start into the game, he just shoots you. You have to immediately dodge it or you get shot. That just screws up your no damage like all the time. Like the timing for it is so weird. You know, you're, you're like in a pause screen, man. Like, I mean, how am I supposed to react to that? You can't react to it. You have to know it's coming. And even when you know it's coming, it's like, you know, okay, so you spam the dodge button, but it's not like the spamming the dodge button, it works all the time. But sometimes you spam it wrong and like the character just kind of stands there and gets shot. Ah, this fight is terrible. It was so annoying to no damage. Oh, here we go. Here comes the bounding. Go for the three light attack hit. Quick step attack. And then, you know, kind of quick step. Yeah, yeah, quick step attack forward. And then kind of keep going with the combo. And there, kind of did a little thing where I was comboing one guy. Another guy came behind me, and I just dodged it out of that to combo that guy. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I really like Yakuza 4 for. The stuff I like about Yakuza 4. And Yakuza 4 also has some pretty cool little QTEs. However, one thing which I'm not really big on is the feel the heat thing. Like, it's better than Yakuza 3 because you don't have to spam the triggers, but it's a bit cheesy that it just kind of stops on like a JPEG. Uh, Yakuza 5's version of it is a lot cooler. I don't know, like, I mean, I do have some nostalgia for like the Yakuza 2 version because it's just like the ground rumbles like, like, yeah, that was pretty dope, but Yakuza 5's version is pretty dope too. 
the Yakuza 4's little QTEs are an improvement over 3, because instead of, you know, spamming the trigger, you just kind of do a few QTEs. So yeah, that's nice. Anyways, glad this boss fight is over, and now, what I like to consider Akiyama's, like, actual first boss fight is here, it's Miname, and he's dope. I just wish the game would do more with him because, I don't know, he's a pretty cool character. He definitely seems like the type of person who'd be Majima's lieutenant. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of like afraid they just doesn't show up in any of the future games. Dude. It's like, man, it's his lieutenant. Like, come on, man. Come on. Y'all, so I, I love this song. It's just lever. I go to X mile. I might go fire, I say the sound. But yeah, anyways, uh, so I'm just gonna, so here, like, this is what happens. You don't really want to, like, uh, juggle enemies into walls because they end up, like, hitting them quite a bit and you can't really, like, infinite them. However, uh, I'm gonna drag Minami into a little corner here and infinite him here. Now, something about Yakuza 4 is that unlike some of the future games like Zero or Kiwami 2, the little QTE, like, little interruptions in the fight, aren't really like forced at like a health point per se as in you can avoid them entirely if you just keep attacking the enemy and when you have options like akiyama where you can just do this <laughs> oh boy yeah they, they, you are not gonna see the qte with minami however for akiyama's final boss fight i do let him do his little qte because it's pretty epic and well I mean, minami is also pretty epic but you know i was just not feeling i was just like you know if i'm gonna infinite this guy i'm gonna infinite this guy now and yeah i do like yeah like the weird little like feel the heat moments can be skipped except for well akiyama's like chainsaw guy anyways here's saijima and i decided to include this little tutorial fight just because it reminds me a lot of uh, kiryu yakuza 1's like first boss fight where kiryu is just fighting dudes in prison even though this fight isn't really up. Well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, it's not like in the original game it was all that hard. I mean, in Kiwami 1, they made it a little bit more difficult, like a little bit more of a boss fight. But yeah, just decided to include this, maybe show off how Saijima works in a crowd. I mean, Saijima here, well, I've actually done quite a bit of like no damaging Yakuza 5 with Saijima. And now that I've returned to Yakuza 4 Saijima, I can say that yeah, Yakuza 5 Saijima is a lot better. He just has a lot more tools. Like, like Yakuza 4 Akiyama and Yakuza 5 Akiyama are a little bit more like, uh, like each have their own advantages and disadvantages. So I'm not really like keen to pick a favor between like Yakuza 4 and Yakuza 5 Akiyama. They're both fantastic, and they're also both gimped in terms of boss fights in those games. But you know, they're both great. As in, but for Saijima, I have to say that Yakuza 5 Saijima is a straight upgrade. However. Uh, Saito here is not that bad of a fight. Like, he is a bit of a ruthless, bit of an annoying little character. And definitely, I think a lot of people remember him for being kind of an asshole. But he's not that hard to deal with. Pretty much all you have to do is bait that running attack he does. And then you can just land a full combo. Mind you, not a full charge combo. Sadly, those charge combos do not work against boss fights because they'll react before you can do that little charge combo. But there are like a few ways to do charge comps. You can kind of do like a faint the light punch, charge it while they're doing something and then land it. I don't know, but I didn't do it here because I just found it a lot more efficient to just kind of do the full little light combo and then land it with an uncharged attack. To be fair, a lot of the strategies for Yakuza 4's boss fights is just kind of bait the running attack and then, you know, land the full combo. Well, not always the full combo, but land a combo. But here's the thing about Yakuza 4. Uh, there's a point where the boss fights just will not like do their running attack a lot of the time So it's just kind of like you have to bait that out You really have to bait out the running attack So it kind of gets annoying at a certain point where you just the character runs at you And then they just stop to get into their fighting position like it's like man I don't want you to get into a stance. I want you to run at me dude. Come on Anyways, here's Saito with a group a little bit more complicated because Saito is an aggressive character You do not want to be dealing with him with a group so I gotta get rid of these little flankies, flunkies, flinkies around him so I can deal with Saito properly. And I've been getting really lucky because that running attack just like, I don't, I don't know, it, it just like, it just zones in on you. Like I got really lucky with that gun block and I just been dodging every time he does it because I cannot take a chance at him like scraping me. Because that thing goes far, far, it goes far. However, one thing that's pretty good about these uh, new characters in the Yakuza 4 is that their grabs have a lot of iframes. 
Like, I don't do the grab with Akiyama all that much because his tool set just has a lot more favorable options. But with stuff like, like with Saijima and Tanimura, especially Tanimura, like their grabs just have a ton of iframes. So you can just hoard all those iframes, just grab a guy, you'll do this like big old animation and the enemies cannot hit you or scrape you because he's just in the zone. And yeah, I really like how he just picked up the Zord there just to get rid of most of his damage. Like heat moves in this game are just extremely OP. Like going from Yakuza 3 to Yakuza 4, like, I mean, I definitely like that you can deal more damage. I just don't like the boss fights, like, health bars are just a lot smaller than in 3. Because it's like, these fights end in flash. And here is Kazuma Kiryu. And he's kind of a crappy fight. Like, besides the little, like, wow factor of, wow, I'm really fighting the protagonist of the last three games. It's just kind of like, it's such a limiting fight. You pretty much have to go for a cheesy strat with like charge attacks because the Kiryu doesn't really have many openings. In fact, I don't think he really has openings. I mean, like, you know, there's this little combo, but it's like you dodge behind him. I don't really think you can do that. You try to attack from the front, he'll tiger drop you at one point or like do a little guard break move. So it's just like, well, okay. But I mean, at least he only has one health bar, so he's kind of easy to just take down with this little cheesy strat before he gets too troublesome. However, the his music here is fantastic. I really love this track. And yeah, I really love this track. And here I decided to include a couple of these little encounters that you're like funneled into even though they're not really all that notable. You're just like fighting three dudes and well three dudes against Saijima is no, no biggie really. But uh, you know, I mean you kind of show off how Saijima works in a group shot. Some of these charge attacks, very nice. Mm, but I guess mm, I might as well explain why like Yakuza 5, like Saijima is just a lot more fun to play around with. Well. Yakuza 5, like, Saijima has the Tiger Drop, which already gives him a lot more options, but also, he just, like, his moveset is just a lot more tailored to dealing with groups. Like, once you throw someone, you can grab them and swing them around for that area of, like, effect, like, damage and all that. He just has a lot more options in 5. And also, I think his charge attacks have a lot more, like, utility in that game, too. But that's also because Yak uh, Yakuza 5's, like, boss fights with Saijima are just a lot more favorable to him, too. That's not to say that his boss fights in Yakuza 4 are bad. It has a pretty decent selection aside from a few stinkers, which we'll be seeing up ahead. Well, by decent I mean that there's like two fights which I really like and then the other ones are either really easy or maddening, maddeningly annoying. Uh, we'll be coming up on a really piss easy fight very soon, but to be fair I think the reason it's so piss easy is just because Saijima is just a beast. And yeah, like his light attacks have a lot of utility in Yakuza 4. Well, no, just in general, his light attacks do have a lot of utility when, you know, you can't, like, you know, charge up your attacks and all that. Anyways, here is Ivan, who is going to get destroyed. <laughs> Man, this guy did not... Oh, like... Too far, I think one reason he just gets destroyed so easily is I'm using that ground pound move. And yeah, that ground pound move just does a ton of damage. I mean, to be fair, not as much as in Yakuza 2, yada yada yada, but like still, in every game it's in, it's one of the most useful moves in the game. Just kind of that little risk reward system with having like, you know, no health, but having a really OP heat move. Like, look at that, just like one grab combo, like one combo, heat action. Charge, whatever. Okay, here's me now, man. I do not. I'm not a fan of this fight because first off, you have to fight a bunch of goons before you can restart it every time, and that is insanely annoying. And second, just like uh, Saijima is just not fitted to fight Mine, Miname. Like Akiyama, to be fair, was broken and could pretty much like like exploit most of his attacks with his little uh, combos and all that. But Saijima, he can't really exploit any of Min Miname's openings all that much. So I'm just kind of like relying on these charge, charge, uh, charge attacks. These charge attacks are really useful because they come out extremely quickly and pretty much just knock the enemy down flat most of the time. And great thing is that Miname loves to drink when I start charging up. So I pretty much get to do the more powerful, just launch them straight into the air attack, which gives me a ton of heat, which means I could land another heat action on him. 
Like, I guess here's the here's my issue with like uh, all the boss fights being split across the characters is that I'm not entirely against like Mina Mei being used to like fight Saijima, but now it just kind of makes me wonder. Hey, why isn't Akiyama fighting this version? Because like this is like an upgraded version. It has new QTEs. It has like new cinematic sequences. Like, you know, it's like it's a uh, it's iterating on the first fight which Akiyama has with him. But it's like. Why isn't Akiyama fighting him? Because, you know, when I fight him as Akiyama, I'm like, wow, this fight is great. Can't wait to see what other fights Ak Akiyama gets to, like, what other boss fights away Akiyama. But then you realize the only other fight Akiyama has in the game is his final boss. And, well, the Amon, but that doesn't count because that guy's an asshole. And you kind of get that sobering feeling with, like, uh, the cast here, which is a shame. And here is Majima. Ah, this fight. Oh man, man, this fight is just maddening too. Because, okay, I guess the a light way to put it is that I vastly prefer his boss fighting Yakuza Five. <laughs> So here is like the big main issue with this fight. It's that spinning attack. Is that okay? So I'm playing the Yakuza 4 remaster, right? The game is at 1080p, 60 FPS. You know, very cool, very nice. However, uh, that 60 FPS kind of breaks a few things. Uh, Akiyama's dodges like are just a lot shorter now for some reason. To be fair, it doesn't really bother me because I don't know. It doesn't really affect any of my strats or how I play the game. But still, kind of whack. And another thing is, I think Majima's spinning attack has been made impossible to deal, to take no damage from. Because the thing is just too fast. Like, all the no damage videos I've seen of this fight are just the PS3 version. And in the PS3 version, you can, like, run around it in a certain way, and yeah, that way you don't take damage. But I have not seen a single PS4, like, remaster attempt where someone, like, does that strat. And I have noticed that if you have the upgrade, you can block the attack. But, you know, I mean, it spins around, so it'll just kind of go to your back. But if you get into a corner, maybe you could block it. But, you know, I didn't want to try that strat. Instead, I did a little something where I, I, like, beat the crap out of Majima up to the point where he wouldn't do the attack. Like, I pretty much, like, beat him up so that he does a little QTE, which takes him out before he does the spinny attack. And the way I do that is I begin the fight by throwing him. Like, if you throw him three times, that'll, act that'll activate it. So I throw him once. I wait for him to do his little get-up animation. I throw him again. And then I run away from him, wait for him to do a predictable attack. I grab him again, and then he'll do that thing where like he stands up with his back towards me. So I'll grab him there, I'll do a heat action there. And then what comes after that is a little more lucky because I'll try to land in a few hits before he activates that little QTE. And I actually got really lucky because I did it, he blocks, which led to a counter attack which I dodged in a really efficient way. And then I landed two more hits, landing more damage. That was a really lucky attempt. But yeah, he's just a ticking time bomb, it's just not that fun. Anyways, here's Tani Mura, and I really like Tani Mura. It's just a shame. I wish he got more fights. Like I'm kind of including a little, a few more of these like group or optional, a uh, few group encounters, few optional encounters, just because like, man, Tani Mura only really has one boss fight. It's a great boss fight, and we'll be getting to it, but you know, kind of a shame. However, here is a pretty neat group encounter, and one neat thing about this on hard is that if you die on this encounter. You can actually restart it, like, right at the start of the encounter. Like, it's not like you have to repeat the whole level to get here, which, well, if you had to do that, I don't know if I'd be doing this. So pretty much the main thing here is that you have a guy with a gun and a guy with a sword. The guy with the sword is very persistent and will be trying to take you down. The guy with the gun will just be shooting you. And he kind of has two major tells. I mean, you know, one is just he points the gun at you and shoots. The other one is that he dodge, he dodges and then immediately shoots you. And that was one which I, took me a while to figure out because, like, I just thought I was getting shot randomly because he didn't have any tells. But he does have a tell. It's the dodge. And he... <laughs> yeah. Bro, look at his face, bro. He looks so goofy with it. Oh, well, that's just the uh, PS3 mocap. Well, uh, Yakuza 4 PS3 mocap. So yeah, I really like Tanimura. Like, uh, 
However, uh, playing this game, I do realize that his parry isn't exactly as useful as I'd like it to be. But to be fair, I think it has a lot in common with the... With, well, I mean, uh, Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2 kind of copied uh, Tanimura's parry to an extent, except it doesn't have a little glowy effect. I do really love that glowy effect, because they like... It pretty much like lets you know you parried that guy. Awesome. In Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2, you kind of have the same effect, except that, you know, there's no cool lighting here. You know, I kind of wish they brought that over into the Dragon Engine, but you know, Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2 don't really like <laughs> any of those like little fancy uh, lighting tells or whatever. But yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, one great thing about Tanimura is just his heat finisher. So pretty much Tanimura has combos, and at the end of a combo, he can do a heat action. That is really useful. Because, well, I mean, Tanimura's combos don't deal all too much damage on their own, but land a little heat action at the end of that, boom, look at that. Health down. And all these animations are really dope. A lot of Tanimura's techniques, well, I don't know anything about martial arts, but I'm assuming a lot of his techniques involve a little bit of judo. And here is Nair, who's pretty much, whose fighting style is just a copy of Tanimura, which means she will parry pretty much everything you do, but there is a way to get around this, and it's by shoving her into this, the uh, bathroom? Yeah, shoving her into this bathroom, so pretty much my strat here is I want to get into this corner and just parry what she does. Because what will happen is that she'll, pro she'll enter a state where she won't parry my attacks, and also I get chances to bound her like that. So pretty much like here she blocks, I think I have to parry her back, but I don't. I pretty much have to hit her, and then hit her again, and then boom. This is where she stops blocking, and stops trying to parry me. It's just boom, look at that, amazing. And then this one's really great, because it boom, she gets hit by the wall, and I get to bound her, ending the fight. Very nice. That is a really useful skill with Tanimura, bounding people into walls. And oh, this intro is great. I do wonder why that guy just doesn't shoot him though. You had him at point blank range, dude. What's up with that? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. The PS4 remaster has fake Tanimura. <laughs> oh man, fake Tanimura. He's all right though. I mean, it's kind of a meme to like kind of talk shit about fake Tanimura. But yeah, he, he's a pretty good. He's, a, he's an all right actor. He's a pretty good replacement for the PS3 original. But in my heart, I will always prefer. That's why your mama did. <laughs> Uh, the PS3 original definitely, I think, embodies a lot more of the pretty boy aesthetic of the original, while this guy's just a little bit more uh, nondescript. I don't know. Okay, so here, uh, so the boss fight. This is like pretty much Tony Moore's only real boss fight, and it's pretty dope. It's against a dope character. He's a mocap actor. He was in the raid too, and he's just kind of a neat fit for Tony Mura. He has a he has some pretty good openings. There's ways to get around his attacks, and he's a threat. I like him. So pretty much my strat here is I begin the fight by doing the Yamama dead heat action and then after that I want to lead him to the wall so I can bound them against the wall. And the reason I want to bound them against the wall is because I want to do heat actions against them because that builds big damage. So the first heat action I do is kind of the arm lock one where if you can do it against an, an opponent who's getting up. And then after that I just do the standard like I bound them again so I can do the standard like stompy heat action and then when he's getting up I hit him with that first, like, you know, square, triangle, combo heat action, big damage, then after that I bound him to the wall to get heat, and then I run away from him to make him do, to, to bait out that running attack that you can, like, land on him, so that I can do the square, square, triangle heat action, more big daddy damage, and then after that I just kind of bound him a bit, and then after bounding him I pretty much lead him out, dodge behind him, end him with a combo. Beautiful. And now here is Kiryu who is fantastic to play as in this game, but, you know, like most of Yakuza 4's characters, doesn't really have much of a roster to say. As in, he's just fighting Saito again. However, I like Saito's fight better as Kiryu, because Kiryu is just stacked. 
Kiryu is definitely like the most balanced out of all the characters. While I think Akiyama is more fun to play as in certain situations, Kiryu easily has the most options in any battle. He has his grabs, he has his combos, he has his parry, he has his tiger drop. He's just stacking. And in Yakuza 4, enemies don't block your attacks. I mean, I mean, I've always talked about how people over exaggerate like enemies blocking your attacks in Yakuza 3, but Yakuza 4 does like changes up the enemy AI a bit where, you know, you can actually like just kind of run to an enemy and land the combo on him. Very nice. But the, the boss fights are still threats. I mean, they won't exactly like take your take your crap, at least well, threats in the uh, air quotes. Yakuza 4 is one of the easiest Yakuza games in general. I think it might be the easiest, aside from a few weird ass jumps in difficulty. But yeah, it's, but it is like definitely I think one of the most fun. Just cause it just, I think it's the peak of like that arcadey feel of like Yakuza. Like Yakuza 3 had that feel and Yakuza 4 just like extends it even further. With all the bounding, the juggling, the dodging, the dodge canceling out of stuff, like Yakuza 4 just feels amazing to play. For that really like kind of floaty, like I don't really know how to describe, it, but I just think it's it's great fun. So pretty much the main thing with Saito is that, well, in his first fight he has a bunch of goons around him. It's a really tight space, so I use the the grab and throws to kind of get a lot, just kind of hoard a lot of high frames while also dealing damage to his enemies. But however, Saito by himself just parry his attack and then just counter attack. Not much to it, but hey, it's Kiryu, you know, it's pretty epic. Oh yeah, but uh, Kiryu's little uh, parry heat action he does afterwards is insanely OP. That thing destroys! So here is uh, the pretty dope little boss fight where Kiryu has to beat the shit out of the new protagonist. So this fight is definitely like uh, a lot better than his than Kiryu's own fight. But you know, seeing as we're playing as Kiryu, we can just decimate these two. And I just skipped their feel the heat thing entirely because I killed Tanimura before they could do any fancy shenanigans. And that's just because Kiryu is just too much of a beast. So yeah, we're just saving a lot of time here. And also a great thing is that seeing as they're two separate boss fights, this heat action did not lose any of its effect. Look at that. Look at that damage. That, honestly, I said that the heat action didn't do as much damage as it did in Yakuza 2, but like that is close. And yeah, that's the pretty boy and watch the porn star down for good. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Bro, every time I see this green dude with the bobblehead cut, I get PTSD. <laughs> Bro, this is the worst fight in the game, bar none. And you know, some people might be surprised by that statement because uh, Tani Muro's final boss exists. But at least with that, I cheesed it with the spear. You'll see what I mean. This fight is just aggravating because yeah, it's pretty much one that relies on the tiger drop. And the tiger drop in Yakuza 3 and 4 is not exact, doesn't have any iframes. So you have to land it like pretty much pitch perfect, like position, well not exactly pitch perfect, I mean it's not frame perfect, at least I don't think it's frame perfect. You pretty much have to land it in a, in a position and time it in a way where you don't get hit. Because if you get hit while you're doing it, you just, you actually get hit. It's not like the Yakuza 1, it's not like Yakuza 2 or 5 or any of the future games where if you land it you're safe. Because you know, if you landed it then you're safe, but here no, you have to land it in a way where you don't take damage. So that makes this fight really aggravating because like this dude sometimes he just messes the positioning like one weird thing I have to do is that you can't really be going back while doing the tiger drop like when he pretty much starts to do that running animation I go forward and then I start to go a little bit to the left because I think that positioning actually makes it that I don't get hit when I do the tiger drop. If I just go forward normally and I'm like I think I get hit sometimes it's just really weird I don't know how to explain it. Like, ah, it's just such an aggravating fight. However, this attempt, pretty smooth. Oh, wait, I completely forgot the worst part about this fight. Is that gun prick. Oh, my. 
he is the, he has the same moveset as uh, the dude in the gun guy in Yakuza 3 had with the shotgun. He doesn't have any telegraphs. That's why I immediately went to get rid of him. Because if you do not get rid of him, he's just going to randomly shoot you and you can't react to it. So pretty much the way you have to get rid of him is... Uh, so two heat actions will bring his health bar extremely low, but it won't kill him. So I pretty much I kind of do like a four hit light attack combo And then after that two heat actions will kill him. So it just kind of like negates any like messing around I have to do later on And here we go. We have Akiyama's final fight who's pretty dope Ah I gotta say, it's pretty ballsy to like front load all to like front load pretty much the all like a like four like boss fights all into the finale of like your game when the when the rest of the game doesn't really have that many boss fights happening per quota but i gotta say this finale kicked ass it's just four uh, three dope fights and also the one last one that's like pretty epic but you know could kind of suck ass but we'll get to that when we get to that so anyways i'm just gonna infinite this guy until we reach his little feel of heat moment just because i kind of want to do his little feel of heat moment it's very cool so yeah i i avoided the wall because if i do it near the wall this will not be an infinite but here i'm just kind of kicking him very nice however one sad thing about this strat which i did is that the music doesn't sync that well with the feel of heat moment what a shame I do love this environment though with all the money flying around, just the Millennium Tower. We're revisiting the Millennium Tower, but instead of just fighting on there, we're just fighting all these like weird like side things. We're just jumping off the Millennium Tower into like it's weird other parts of the building. It's cool. One weird thing I noticed is that during these QTEs, the money is just frozen. I don't remember if the PS3 version was like that too, but that is extremely strange because it's all flying around all naturally here. But once the QTE starts, it's just frozen in midair. It's not like they're in slow mo, so it's just like, what's going on here? Is this like a remaster issue or was it also on PS3? I'm, I'm not really sure. そうか。俺がちゃんとお前の思い受け止めたるわ。しっかりお願いしますよ。ああ。手加減なし。死ぬかもしれへんけど文句言うんじゃない。偉い。はい。おい。ボーダー。いや。So yeah, here's Kido, and he's a pretty decent boss fight, final boss for Saijima. Once again, he's kind of, he's a lot like Saito, where he pretty much, his opening is just exploit his running attack, do a full combo behind him, and both well, little heat action. A bit tedious, but I like it. Like, given Saijima's moveset, it's a decent little fight, not that hard, but it's a decent challenge, for no damage at the very least. If you're just playing normally as Saijima, well... Look at the dude's health bar. If you just play normally, nothing's really a challenge. But for no damage, pretty fun. And with Kiddo uh, here, his running attack, uh, he does it all the time, which I really appreciate. That's definitely a change from certain boss fights like Seguchi, who 
like gloves to like like cancel out of his running attack that guy is a pain with his running attack but here he does it mostly all the time but sometimes he won't do it so you definitely got to watch out for that and when you're done with your full combo there you have to immediately dodge because he will go into a little attack wow they look at that crazy stuff i mean it is kind of a little pathetic rampage you just kind of run away and just witness it but you know whatever So yeah, Kiddo also has a weird healing phase. I do kind of like it though, because it's like, you know, Kiddo is such a beast that once he's taken down, bro, he just gets back up. And it technically gives him three health bars, like three full health bars, which sadly uh, Akiyama's boss fight doesn't get. But to be fair, with Akiyama's boss fight, I don't really know what more health is going to do to that guy. And here, uh, we're gonna enter his final little QTE. However, I ran away like a little bitch <laughs> at the last moment because I thought he'd do an attack before it. So yeah, here's Daigo, who's a pretty dope fight. Like, I don't know, I'm just glad to see him after Yakuza 2 and he actually has like a like a real move set now, which is really nice. However, you know, it is such a shame that, you know, Yakuza 4's damage is so busted because I just kind of eliminated him extremely quickly. But to be fair, that does make, that is very useful for me because once Daigo enters his third phase, he's a little bit tricky to deal with because he just straight up just has super armor for that, for the rest of the fight. I find I find a way to get around it. Like the reason I'm being like so careful with him, just kind of doing like weird three taps. Because I'm not really sure if he's in his second or his third phase. Because at that point, I forgot uh, that he actually changes key colors based on his first, second, or third phase. You know, like you start off the fight and he has no heat aura. You do it to the second phase and he has like a light purple aura. You get to the third phase and he has a very bright purple aura. So, anyways. One weird thing which I've always found about Yakuza yeah, 4 is that this QT looks kind of cheap. It's just like Kiryu like kneeing Daigo and Daigo kneeing him back. And the weird thing is that like, you know, Kiryu does a certain animation, Daigo copies the exact same animation afterwards. Kiryu does a certain animation, Daigo copies the same animation afterwards. It looks really robotic. And the way they just like fixated on such a, for such a long time is just weird as hell. You know, they're, like they're still kind of figuring out the cinematic QTs here. But it's weird because the other ones have a little more energy to them, like Akiyama and Saijima, but oh well. Ooh, okay, here we go. Okay, the music is gonna sync up really well to this next section. Here we go.
Dude, the music sync up there was so sexy. I loved it. And also, I kind of skipped uh, Daigo's entire third phase just by doing that big parry heat action. And then that heat action just led to another little QT section where I just demolish him. And here is Tanimura's final boss, who is a bit of an asshole, but not so much when you have the dragon spear. You'll see, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, that's kind of ugly. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I really love this little intro despite the little goofy ass like zoom-ins. Uh, yeah, mocap, uh, P P Yakuza 4 mocap uh, hasn't aged the best, but oh well. So anyways, here I go. This is the only fight where I use equipment, and it's because it is a, just a ridiculous fight for Tanimura. Who thought this was a good idea? Like, it's epic. Like, oh, he's going to fight the whole police force, but he does not have the tools to no damage this on his own. So I brought some tools of my own, the Dragon Spear. Why is the Dragon Spear so badass? Well, pretty much what it does is that... So the weapons in Yakuza 4, like you can pick stuff off all the, you can pick like weapons off the ground, you know, do a little like light combo, you can do a heavy attack, and you can throw the weapon. However, if you own the weapon, you can press circle to do a little special attack, and most of these special attacks have iframes. I'm not sure if all the weapon special attacks have iframes, but the spear one does. And the great thing about the spear one is it gives you iframes. You can activate it instantaneously. And it does a full arc around your character. So you just shove yourself into that group, press circle, and just watch everyone go to the ground. And while everyone is on the ground, you, all that heat you gain from slamming everyone to the ground, you can use to land a heat action on someone and just decimate them out of the game. BAM! And that way you can get rid of the entire group. However, the one drawback with doing these attacks is that it takes away a lot of the weapon's durability. I brought the Dragon Spear because that thing has 100 durability. However, every time you do an attack, it takes off 10 of the durability points or whatever. So pretty much you only have 10 swings. However, pretty much every time I swing that weapon, I completely get rid of an enemy, at least like the common folk. Like the ones who only have like one health bar, I completely get rid of them. There's only like ten enemies plus the. Well, I mean, I didn't. I'm not. I didn't do an exact count, but from my memory, there's only really like ten enemies here plus the boss fights. You can get rid of like eight or nine of those dudes instantaneously, and you still have like swings on your little, little spear thing. And then there's like the enemies which have a little more health, like this guy and the bodyguard captain, who is a real pain in the ass. And I make he makes me really mad because I only figured out how to deal with him at the very end of this clip, which kind of makes this little no damage attempt a little dragged out, which you know I'm kind of ashamed about. But I'm not gonna go back and redo it, bro. I, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I ain't going back, no. And also here is a little heat action not registering. Like what I'm trying to do is do a little like gun heat action, but those previous times I just kept doing that kick because it just didn't show up for me which is very painful because this bodyguard guy here you do anything to that policeman he gets on your ass really fast so you know i mean i'm just doing these quick little taps just hoping that guy does not clip me because he is running towards me and there comes a certain point where he almost attacks me i'm like a frame off from getting damaged like you'll see what i mean i'll tell you when i see it Thankfully, it's not that part, because usually when you do a combo, he gets on your ass. But there, he did a little weird-ass stop, which I really appreciate. It's that rolling attack. He just rolls into you, kind of does a little, like, tackle, and it's just such a pain. And he almost does it to me. But thankfully, like, for some reason, I land the attack for him. Look at that! He was right there! He was going to kill me! But thankfully, because I am such a good, uh, I'm, because I am very good at Yakuza, he doesn't. I immediately dodge out of there, because I know that is a danger zone. And now I'm just trying to find a way to take out the police chief. And I just ended with a little kick. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
And now here I figure out how to deal with this guy. And it's one of Tanimura's most basic like tech moves. Pretty much just bound him into a wall. Like I was like, the reason I was running around so much is I did not know how to deal with this guy. You can't combo him. He dodges everything you do. Like parrying him doesn't really give you like the, the cool heat action the other things do. You can't grab him. So I was like, damn, how am I going to deal with this guy? And I, it took me that long to figure out, oh, just bound him into the wall. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if bounding into the wall would have been that useful when the other guy was trying to shoot me, but it, it would have helped. And now, okay, anyways, we're at the Amones, and Kazuya Amon, this asshole. Oh, no, I hate this guy so much. He is easily the hardest Amon. That's because he counters everything you do. You literally cannot attack. There is no, this guy has zero openings. The only way you're able to, like, get an opening is by sheer luck. There is no consistent way to get this guy on the ground. And the reason you want to get this guy on the ground is because you want to infinite. However, you can't really do the infinite I did before. I'm doing like a weird like wall infinite where pretty much I like combo him into the wall and then I just combo him really hard. And then when he's trying to get back up, I do that. However, here I'm going to mess it up and then I'm going to... Most times I will be screwed, but I got extremely lucky and those kicks got him on the ground. But that is not consistent. You can't consistently do that. There is no oh, no attack he does where you can like consistently get him after that. The thing is, usually after most attacks he does, he just immediately counter attacks afterwards. It's so annoying. Once he gets into heat mode, he is impossible to deal with without heat actions. Like you pretty much like don't you don't do any of your like really special heat action like this wall thing until you reach this heat mode because you'll be wasting your time look at that look at all those kicks none of them land like you pretty much once he's into heat mode he dodges everything or attacks after everything however one neat thing is i do get heat back so the rest of this fight i just kind of spend uh trying to do a little heat action where i kick him in the nuts oh and uh uh sadly this the uh, amon fights are not on hard because i did them on premium adventure I started my premium adventure save uh, using my hard save file. However, when I look into stats, it says normal. What the hell, man? Like, if I start a premium adventure save with a hard save file, why the hell would you make it normal? That's so stupid. But I'm not going to go back into my normal save file and play it on hard because I want to fight the Amons with my drip, like the Akiyama homeless drip, man. I want to fight him like that. I want to fight gyro as a shirtless wrestler saijima i don't want to fight him with like his like whack-ass green coat like come on man anyways here's gyro who's uh who's easier than hmm yeah he's easy but he's tedious because uh after a certain point he starts healing his health the reason i'm not doing any heat actions at the moment is because i'm just gonna save all that damage for when he's actually healing up so I pretty much start to fight, like, pretty much, like, uh, he, Gyro here is copying, uh, Musashi Kenzin's moveset from Heavy Sword moveset, plus the Heavy Weapon moveset. So he can go from doing really fast attacks to, like, these slow predictable ones. For the slow predictable ones, you can land a neat little combo there, but for the fast ones, all you can do is really grab him, do a grab combo. However, yeah, so either you can deal a combo and grab damage, or you can deal just a grab damage. However, it is really neat that you can just grab immediately after any attack he does. Definitely saves, like, a lot of... Oh, it's a very useful skill, because you can just knock him on the ground, do a heat action, and sometimes when you're grabbing, you can just do a heat action. If you don't like that, look at that. Amazing. But yeah, the healing phase is very tedious. And also that move he does, which copies Musashi Kenzin, is extremely annoying to deal with because it comes out so fast. <laughs> you gotta keep your distance with this guy. And now he enters Red Heat, where he has a really predictable combo chain. You can just go in and grab him afterwards. You know, a bit of a weird addition, but I'm just glad they didn't give him any bullshit moves because he already had some bullshit moves before that. Oh, and then there's this charge attack where you pretty much can charge and do a little heavy attack combo. The reason I don't do that sometimes is because when you have heat, you just end up doing a heat action. And sadly, I don't think they implemented a way to like cancel out a heat action until like Yakuza 5 where you hold down the L2 button. In the previous games, if you were in a position to do a heat action but you wanted to do a kick, you're doing the heat action. Now, anyways, here's Sango. His first phase is really boring. 
Like you pretty much all you can do is just wait for him to attack and then you attack him. Sometimes he'll take the hit, sometimes he'll block it, but you know, you just kind of wait for it. Because if you attack him before then, he'll just parry you because he has Tony Miller's parry. But if you attack him while he's in the middle of an attack, then we'll, you know, you'll attack him. So, you know, I do a gun heat action and then I'll do a combo heat action afterwards to get him down. However, I'm going to warn you, the second phase is the doozy. So here he enters his second phase, which is pretty cool. He gets a ton of cool moves. He has a few pretty cool openings he's challenging. However, I found my opportunity to cheese the hell out of him, and I took it. What I did not expect was that it was going to take like three straight minutes of nothing happening <laughs> for this strat to work. But I saw my opportunity, and I was going to do it. I mean, I haven't seen anyone else do this, so hey, it's unique. It's just that it, it's, such, it's so suck-ass. <laughs> So anyways, I don't know, I guess I could talk about Yakuza 4, my thoughts on it, is that, well, like I said, uh, I mean, I have a few regrets, as in when it comes to my all Yakuza games ranked video, it is my most popular video on my channel, and just, I think some of those positions, like, I put the games in, are just kind of whack. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, Yakuza 4, I'd have to put a couple, couple steps down. I mean, Yuck, I just think Yakuza 2 and Kenzin are a lot, a lot better. They just feel a lot more complete. Um, uh, yeah, like right now, that's kind of where I am. I'll, I'll if I if I start doing any no damages of the other games, you know, I'll update my thoughts on those. But you know, I had this really neat idea where once I uh, no damage like all the Yakuza games, I'll like redo my all Yakuza games ranked video, but I'll rank them in like the order of just how fun they are to no damage. You know, like, you know, how dope are their boss, like, li like lineups, you know, levels, pacing, you know, yada, yada, yada. And also just their core combat systems. Because, I don't know, I mean, you know, I mean, it's one thing to rank the games in terms of, like, you know, their quality or, like, how much the side quests are. And then it's another thing to rank them just for, like, their no damage, like, capabilities. So, yeah, Yakuza 4, I don't know, one thing is that, yeah, I do think the main story is a bit lacking. Like, in the, like, I don't know. I was thinking about comparing Yakuza 4 to Yakuza 3, and it's just, I was thinking about how, like, in, from, like, from a moment-to-moment, -moment, like, gameplay-like basis, I find Yakuza 4 a lot more engaging, but in the long term, like, Yakuza 3 has those Kino fights, like, the one in the strip club, the final boss, the dude, the, uh, the guy in the trench coat with the guns, like, Yakuza 3 has so many amazing fights, and to be fair, they only really become amazing once you like have are fully upgraded and are able to like fight them on an equal playing field. Once you can, they are just so much fun. Like I love Yakuza 3's boss fight so much, but on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, I think Yakuza 4 is a lot more engaging. Like I love the way the Yakuza 4 handles side quests. Like so, pretty much you have four protagonists, and each protagonist like side quests kind of have like a certain theme to them. So you know, like you complete like one protagonist like like collection of side quests, and you move on to the next protagonist. So you're dealing with like a bunch of different like you're dealing with like a different vibe completely. And I think it's a really clever way to handle it. It feels really dope. Like Akiyama, you get like some insight into like his backstory with Saijima's. You're like exploring the past. You're also like. It kind of shows off like his like very old school honor like Yakuza thing. With Tani Muras, you're doing a lot of police work. You're investigating like this big conspiracy. And then with Kiryu, a lot of his side quests are just revisiting the past, which I think is just a really cool thing because you know Yakuza 4's like subtitle in Japan is successor of like the legend or the, yeah I think it's successor of the legend. So you know I mean while it, this game really shouldn't have Kiryu, despite how funny is to play. I mean, you know, if you're going to succeed the legend, you know, it's kind of neat to have a bunch of side quests that kind of reference that past before moving on, which, you know, this series isn't, isn't this doesn't move on from Kiryu, but, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Kiryu, uh, I think this is probably my least favorite version of Kiryu. 
like in terms of like story wise and character wise he just feels like he's kind of reaching a point where he got a little bit flanderized just because he you know he's the cool guy he's the wise guy but some of the things he says in this game are so whack but anyways we're fighting joe amona and i really like this fight i think it's really dope like you know the first phase is just mine on crack where you pretty much just have to wait for him to dodge and then parry that except that he he dodges like really fast, so you know, you gotta be on the lookout for those parries. In the second phase, he just kind of cycles between his brother's movesets. Which, thankfully, I, I'm glad he cycles, because I could not deal with Kazuya's moveset. The other two movesets, there's ways to deal with them. Like, that moveset, I'm, I, I, I can't fight that, <laughs> but thankfully, I don't have to. So, with the hammer, it's, it's really easy to deal with, because you just kind of uh, make him do an attack parry go for a little quick combo and when you have the heat go for a grab combo so you can land them on the ground for a swift heat action very nice and with the gun guy he's a little more tricky to deal with but he does have openings like he'll dodge once and then he'll go into an attack and some of those attacks you can actually retaliate and attack him with mind you, you can't deal that big of a combo you can just go tap heavy heavy but those two styles you can actually deal with which is very nice however when i was fighting him here he mostly relied on his hammer and when he switched to gun he barely attacked so you know oh well oh yeah he just summons the laser casually you know as you do So yeah, Yakuza 4, I think, is a pretty dope game, like, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, but thinking about it in the long term, there's a few disappointing aspects to it, you know, to boss design, level design, content, yada yada, but I think it's a really dope game. I guess one of my issues with it is that it feels like a great story that's just rushed a little too much, but anyways, yeah, that's my Yakuza 4 no damage, thanks for watching, uh, I'll see you sometime in the future, Yakuza Kenzin video will get worked on maybe this week I don't know anymore